Unfinity, the new Unset is finally coming out. So I decided to make a special EDH deck tech on one of the Acorn cards that isn't technically commander legal, but I still think it would be a very fun deck to build around. Specifically, I'm gonna be building around Vorthos, Steward of Myth, which is a 1-3 legendary human gamer for one in a red with as Vorthos, Steward of Myth, enters the battlefield, choose a named Magic the Gathering character, and each spell you cast with the chosen character in its name, flavor text, or art costs Wooburg less to cast, and this effect reduces only the amount of color mana you pay. Obviously, this is basically a tribal deck where you're making your tribal deck around just one specific character in Magic the Gathering. For this deck, I decided to build around Nicol Bull specifically, one of the most iconic villains in Magic the Gathering history. Due to the way that a lot of the Nicol Bolas cards work, we're primarily going to be leaning into a very control heavy style of play. We're going to be running a lot of removal spells and board wipes, and we're also going to be running a lot of ways to steal our opponent's stuff and get their stuff from the graveyard so that we can use them to take out our opponents. One other thing to note about this deck is due to the nature of being a very flavorful deck, we're going to lean a lot more into flavor over function. So generally speaking, the deck is going to be a bit lower power since we're not using the most effective version of all these effects. When it comes to the cards we're running, first off, we got to start off with Fist of Sons and Jota Archmage Eternal. These are two cards that when Vorthos is out, essentially make a mini Omniscience. Since Jota and Fist of Sons make our cards Wooburg to cast, and Vorthos reduces the cost of our Nicol Bolas cards by Wooburg, it essentially makes all of our Nicol Bolas themed cards completely free to cast. Now with that out of the way, let's actually get into our Nicol Bolas themed cards. Of course, this can't be a Nicol Bolas deck without running every single version of Nicol Bolas that's been printed. So we're going to be running the original Nicol Bolas, Nicol Bolas the Ravager, Nicol Bolas Planeswalker, Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh, and Nicol Bolas the Deceiver. All these cards are pretty awesome, and if we're able to untap with them, that's going to be super great for us to control the board a bit more. And they also provide certain removal spells and ways to deal with our opponent's stuff that's pretty mean. And thanks to Vorthos' ability, they're going to be coming down a lot sooner. One place where we see Bolas a lot in cards is in removal spells. We're going to be running No Escape, Soul Manipulation, Counter Squall, and Mana Drain. All of these all have a specific printing where it, in some form of flavor text or art, Nickel Bolas is referenced. Another way that Bolas lets us deal with our opponent's stuff is by letting us steal them. So we have Slave of Bulls, which allows us to steal somebody's creature, use it until end of turn, and then sacrifice it. The Eldest Reborn allows us to make our opponent sacrifice creatures, and then we can take a creature from their graveyard and put it onto our battlefield. Or if we want, we can reanimate one of our own things. We also have In Bulls' Clutches, which allows us to deal with any permanent by taking it for ourselves. This can be super backbreaking if we take somebody else's commander. When it comes to direct removal spells, we have D-Spark, which when we have fourth those out is essentially just a free exile and a permanent with 4 mana value or greater. We have Tyrant Scorn, which allows us to destroy any creature with converted mana cost 3 or less, and also lets us bounce a creature to their opponent's hand. And we also have Finale of Eternities. This lets us destroy up to 3 target creatures with toughness X or less, but if we get to the end game and we're allowed to dump a ton of mana into this, we can also return a bunch of creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield. While it's not going to come up super often, it is a nice bonus to have. For Bolas themed ramp, there's not too many options just since Bolas is generally speaking in Grixis colors, but we do have access to Domri and Bolas, which boosts our creatures and make it so our creature spells can't be countered, which isn't super useful in this deck considering it's very spell slingy, but it does provide us a decent ramp piece, and because Domri's creature synergies aren't super helpful in this deck, our opponents may be a lot less likely to swing at him. But in a pinch, we can also turn Domri into a removal spell since he makes it so a creature we control fights a creature that we don't control. The other ramp piece that references Bolas that we're going to be running is Visage of Bolas, which when it enters the battlefield, we actually get to tutor the card Nickel Bolas the Deceiver into our hand, which is a nice bonus, and it taps for Grixis. While it is a 4 mana card, I, it's on flavor, so I thought it was important to add here. When it comes to Bolas themed card draw, on the other hand, we have a few more options. We have Augur of Bolas, which allows us to get an instant or sorcery into our hand when it enters the battlefield. And we have Eternal of Harsh Truth, which when it attacks and isn't blocked, lets us draw a card. And because it has a flick too, our opponents are going to be less likely to block them. 
We also have Deep Analysis, which allows us to draw two cards, and we can also flash it back later to draw even more cards from it. And from the more exciting standpoint, there are a ton of bolus themed flashy card draw spells that we have access to. One of my absolute favorites has to be Bolus' Citadel, which allows us to pay a life and cast cards from the top of our library until we can't pay them anymore. This can be a great way to storm off as long as we don't run into too many lands. We also have Patient Rebuilding, which allows us to mill our opponents and draw cards for each land that was put into a graveyard this way. Additionally, milling our opponents is pretty useful considering there's a decent amount of bolus effects that allows us to steal creatures from our opponent's graveyards. And the final bolus theme card draw spell that we have access to is Commence the Endgame, which allows us to draw two cards and allows us to then amass X, a great way to get a big creature onto the battlefield and draw some cards. When it comes to board wipes, bolus has access to a ton. We're going to be running Rivers Rebuke. This is basically a board wipe for only one person, so it can be really mean to somebody in particular if they're going off, or it can be great to deal with a token deck since we're bouncing them all to their hand. We also have the classic Hour of Devastation, which is great for dealing with indestructible threats and can just sweep up a lot of our opponent's smaller creatures. We have the classic Crux of Fate, which allows us to destroy all non-dragon creatures, and this can actually be really useful if we have something like Nicol Bolas out on the battlefield. Then we also have the Amonkhet version of Damnation, just the classic board wipe that we love to see. Of course, Bolas doesn't appear on just ramp card draw and removal spells, he of course shows up on a bunch of other random cards that are pretty just general good stuff that we're going to throw into the deck because it fits the theme and <laughs> no other real reason to do so. To have the Eternal is a super awesome card, getting us a bunch of mana for how much our opponents lose life each turn, and is just a strong attacker due to the fact that it's a 4-6 with Afflict 3. We also have Mind Claw Shaman, this is super cool because it lets us steal an instant or sorcery from our opponents, and this can be really useful if we know our opponents are running deck with a bunch of powerful instants and sorceries. Palidia Moors the Ruiner is just generally a really good body, a 6-6 with Flying Vigilance and Trample, and Hexproof until it deals damage is just generally pretty strong. We also have Tormenting Voice, a great way for us to cycle our cards. Imp's Mischief lets us change the target of a spell in case we want to deal with an opponent's threat or we want to protect our own board. Deliver Onto Evil is a weird recursion factor fiction effect, and if we have a bolus effect, we actually get all of the cards into our hand, which is great. One of my favorite subsections of Bolus's cards are the crazy high mana value finishers that he has access to. Cruel Ultimatum can be absolutely backbreaking for one of our opponents and lets us get a bunch of card draw and return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. Fraying Omniscience is super great, dealing so much damage to our opponents and making them sacrifice a bunch of their board. Apex of Power is a super cool card, basically giving us access to a full 7 and 10 mana to play with when we play it. We also have access to the classic Omniscience thanks to the Amonkhet Invocation. This can be absolutely backbreaking if this sticks on the battlefield and should basically win us the game if we have it out. And of course, the absolute classic in black, if we generate enough mana, this can basically just win us the game as a super easy finisher. Torment of Hailfire, if we jam enough black mana into this, it should be super easy to deal with our opponents. Now, ideally, we would have access to only Bolas themed cards for the entire deck, but unfortunately, there's just some areas that Bolas cards don't really cover, and so we're going to try and patch that up with some additional cards that don't reference Bolas specifically. One area that we're really lacking in is Ramp, and this is especially bad considering we're running a lot of decently high mana value spells that are full with a bunch of mana symbols that we're going to probably have to need to cast if we don't have Vorthos out. We're going to be running Cultivate and Dryad of the Illusionist Grove. We're going to be running Arcane Signet, Ornithopter of Paradise, Felvar Stone, Soul Ring, Rampant Grope, Farseek, Chromatic Lantern. All these are great ways for us to generate mana super easily and fix our colors, which is going to be very important in a five color deck. And of course, we are in red, so we're going to be running Jezka's Will, a super great way for us to generate mana in a pinch, but also draw some cards on top of that. Speaking of card draw, we're going to be running two wheels in this deck to help support the strategy of stealing stuff out of our opponent's graveyards, running Windfall and Reforge the Soul, just classic wheel effects that we all know and love. Then also because this deck is filled with a lot of instants and sorceries, we're going to be running Archmage Eritus. This is a great way for us to just draw cards super easily by doing what we were already going to do anyways. And finally, we're also going to be adding Seagate Restoration. This is great because it doubles as a land and in a pinch, this can draw us a 
good number of cards and also give us no max hand size to the end of the game, which is pretty cool. This deck doesn't have access to as many creatures, so we're going to be running a few defensive cards to make sure that we are able to avoid damage and protect our permanents. Specifically, we're going to be running Propaganda and Ghostly Prison. These cards do a great job at dissuading our opponents from attacking us, and this works especially well against go-wide strategies. We're also running Heroic Intervention. This is just a great way for us to protect our board, especially if we board wipe, which is going to be something that we're going to be doing more frequently than others. Additionally, to further support that plan of stealing stuff from our opponents, we're going to be adding Animate Dead, Reanimate, and the Scarab God to the deck. These are great ways for us to get stuff out of not only our graveyard, but our opponent's graveyards. Then finally, we're also running a handful of modal double face cards. These are great because they're kind of utility spells, but they also double as our lands, which is going to be super useful for us. Undo Inversion and Shatter Call Smashing are essentially just mini board wipes attached to lands. Malakir Rebirth allows us to protect one of our creatures. Hagramoling is just a straight up murder. Balagid Recovery lets us recur one of our cards, and Valakid Awakening lets us cycle our hand away and draw a fresh grip just in case we have a hand of like no lands or something. For the main base in this deck, we're going to be running a classic suite of just tries, fetches, and shock lands. Nothing super crazy for a 5 color mana base, we're just going to be leaning mainly towards Grixis colors. If you enjoyed this deck tech and want to check out all of my others, check out this one right over here I did on Jota the Unifier.